gay bank worker who married a woman from India to hide his sexuality has been jailed for life after strangling her and burning her body in an incinerator in his back garden. Jasveer Ginde from Warsaw killed Varka Rani just months into their marriage. His victim's family say all they've done since is cry. Callum Watkinson reports. Jasveer Ginde showed absolutely no emotion whatsoever as he was convicted this afternoon of the murder of his wife. He kept his eyes, as he has done throughout this three-week trial, firmly fixed on the ground. In the public gallery, members of Varkarani's family smiled and congratulated each other. They have now sat through nearly three weeks of harrowing testimony about what was done to her thousands of miles from home by a man they trusted to protect her. Six months after joining hands with Varka Rani for a first dance at their wedding in India, Jasveer Ginde used those hands to strangle his new bride. For the gay bank worker from Warsaw, this was a marriage of concealment, not companionship. He killed Varka once she'd played her part and burned her body like garden waste. <laughs> A mother's grief now fills the home where Varka lived her life, 5,000 miles from the house in Warsaw, where it ended when she'd been in Britain for less than a month. He'd already made his plan to marry a girl from India and kill her. He could have left her here after the wedding. She could have stayed with us. She was the most precious of my daughters. She was my favourite. <laughs> he bought a small bottle of petrol on the day of the murder. As Varka's body burned, he reported her missing and told the police she'd left. The next day, they found her in a garden incinerator. Ten people were arrested. Only Ginde was charged. That could have worked against him in the end because he came to the police station, the Warsaw police station, and stated that his wife had left him. That initiated our, our inquiries to the home address and subsequently we, we found her body. Well, I don't think it, uh, it helped him. Maybe a couple of days more, we would have found it very difficult to identify her. Admitting manslaughter, Ginde said the couple fought when Varka found out that he was gay and tried to leave. He said he put a vacuum cleaner tube across her throat to calm her down. He said he strangled her by accident. He said he took her body into the garden and burnt it in an incinerator because he panicked. Ginde's defense depended on him convincing the jury he was so scared of people knowing he was gay that he completely lost control when Varka threatened to tell that secret. The problem with that defense, the prosecution said, was that Ginde's sexuality wasn't actually a secret at all. Texts from Ginde talked of nights out at this gay club in Birmingham and a visit to Gay Pride in 2012. Hardly a place it was suggested to the jury for men who hide their homosexuality. The fact still remains that his family members knew he was active in the gay scene, he went to gay clubs, so he, he used it in court, uh, so hopefully that would have helped him, but it didn't. Varka's family shed tears of joy as her wedding ended. A year on, with justice done, they're shedding tears of pain. They're devastated, devastated, broken. The family's broken in India. That's all we've been doing day in, day out, is cry, cry, cry. She had four degrees. She had a good life here. She was a very dutiful daughter. He killed her in such a heartless way. He should be locked up for a long time. Ginde had planned to leave Varka in Warsaw and take a job in London, a double life secured. It's not clear why he changed those plans. The prosecution said he killed because once Varka arrived, reality was staring him in the face. Her family think marriage then murder was his intention from the start. Sentencing Ginde to life in prison, his honour Judge Warner told him he was a devious and controlling man and a meticulous planner. 
He said what he'd done to Varka was horrible, almost beyond imagining, and said he'd behaved in an unbelievably casual and callous way with a complete lack of humanity. He'll serve 21 years in prison before he's eligible for parole. Callum Watkinson, ITV News, Wolverhampton. Documents have been released.